Hey photographers, welcome back to the channel. Today I'd like to go over a couple new products I have. And when I say new products, um, they've been out on the market for a little bit. So they're not new in terms of just out on the market, but uh, they are new to me because I just bought them. And I thought I'd run through them real quick for those of you who might be considering something like this and uh, would like a little, little more information. <clears throat> but before we jump into that, I want to wish everybody a very happy Thanksgiving, which is coming up here tomorrow. And I hope everybody has something fun planned with family and plenty of foods. Um, we all have something to be thankful of if you, if you search. And, uh, you know, thankfulness, gratitude is a choice like everything else. And we all have things that we can be grateful for and thankful for. I know I'm thankful for my family. I'm thankful, thankful for this YouTube channel and thankful for you guys who tune in to see my photography or to see my moto vlogs. Uh, thank you so much. I do appreciate it. If you like content like this, please like and subscribe and uh, hit that bell notification and I'll let you know when I put a new video out. But anyway, let's jump right on into it. All right. The first thing I picked up was this set of case magnetic filters. Now, just to give you a little comparison here, I had the Lee filter system before. You can see the difference. Much smaller form factor. Carrying this around your backpack is a little more difficult than carrying this around. And I was intrigued by the magnetic uh, aspect of it. And I know case has great quality. Uh, it comes in a leather case shipped to you. And these, by the way, are the uh, Wolverine series. I think they have a later series out now called Revolution or something like that, uh, which basically just adds colors to the ring so you can easily identify them. Uh, I didn't need that, so I picked up the Wolverine set. And uh, let me show you what comes in the set. Well, first of all, I bought it for my largest uh, filter size, and that's an 88, uh, 82, excuse me, 82 millimeter filter ring. Um, so I bought it for that size, and my 15 by 35 wide angle lens is that 82 millimeters. And by the way, I'm working with a Canon R5, and of course the uh, RF series lenses. Uh, I also have a 24 to 105 lens that is a 77, so 77 millimeter. So what I did was I bought a step-up ring uh, that fits on my 77 millimeter that allows me to attach the 82 millimeter uh, filters on there. Um, very neat system, buy one step-up ring and I can use the same filters on both lenses. Um, and of course it comes with a lens cap. Uh, there's the step-up ring. There's a magnetic ring that I've already attached on the inside threads of the 82 millimeter <clears throat> lens. And when I say it's magnetic, I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty strong. I mean, I got to get my fingernails under there to pull this lens cap off. Uh, but anyway, so not worried about things dropping off. But let's dive into what comes in uh, the package here with the, with the filters themselves. And, you know, I love the Lee filter system. Um, very robust. I have several filters in here. Um, the attachment apparatus is pretty large and bulky, um, but it worked well. Uh, and Lee is well known for their filters. Had no problems with quality with Lee. Uh, I've had this for, gosh, seven or eight years now and it was just time to move on to something smaller and easier more portable and that's where a case comes in beautiful leather pouch for these things to come in um, it comes with a lens cloth to wipe off the lens we all have multiple lens cloths but you get an extra one and a little guide for when you're using the neutral density filters um, and you're, you're wanting to take, take long exposure a little guide to help you with that. So let's go through here and see what we have. Um, another lens cap. Uh, 
and then we got some neutral density filters. This one is the KW ND1000. I believe this is the 10 stop neutral density filter. So super dark, allows you to take very long exposures. Then this is the KN ND64. I believe that's a six stop neutral density filter. And then we end up with a three stop neutral density filter. Yes, much lighter than the other ones. Uh, KWND8, which is, I believe, the three stop neutral density filter. And last in the kit comes a circular polarizer. Uh, very handy for taking the glare off of water taking the glare off of foliage, if it's wet foliage, um, just very useful out in the field. So happy to have that. KWCPL, Circular Polarizing, oh, what's the L? Lens, maybe? Circular Polarizing Lens? Uh, anyway, all of these 82 millimeter, they fit on either one of these with the step-up ring. So super happy about that. Can't wait to get out in the field and start taking some photos and trying my hand at, a, at more uh, long exposures, you know, with waterfalls or lakes or rivers. Uh, Going to take some long exposures, maybe get some uh, light trails from cars or whatever. Uh, anyway, excited for that. Wanted to share that with you guys. I'll put a link in the description below of where I picked this up so you can... Uh, act on that if you want to. Um, but okay, let's move on to the second thing I purchased, um, which is a bit of an unboxing and demonstration. So hang tight. Okay, next on the list, uh, some years ago, I picked up this Manfrotto 055 carbon fiber, very stout tripod. It's my, been my tripod for a good number of years. Man, it can do everything. And even though it's carbon fiber, it's pretty large and still pretty heavy because it's so large. And I took this to the Faroe Islands with me and uh, there were some times where it was difficult to carry the backpack and this massive tripod. Now I was worried about, you know, the high winds at the Faroes. I was worried about having something super sturdy because uh, there's some pretty good cliffs. You lose your camera up there, you're never getting it back. Um, but, and this has served me well, and I'm going to keep it for certain situations, but I really needed a lighter uh, tripod, sort of travel tripod that I can use uh, for just quick trips or when something like this is just going to be too big to cart around. So, therefore, and you guys are going to have to help me with the pronunciation, Hepi, Hypi, he, he, Hypi, I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. Tripod. Uh, it's a travel tripod that competes with the uh, sort of peak design. If you guys are familiar with the very cool peak design tripod that's out there, very expensive. Uh, this comes in slightly less expensive, but I think has quite a, quite a few characteristics that let it compete well with um, that Peak Design one. So let's do a quick unboxing and then we'll take it outside and I'll show you what it looks like all set up. <clears throat> I'm excited about this. I've been watching this for a while. And like I said, I think it's been out on the market for a bit, um, but I just now I'm pulling the trigger on it. It's well packaged, box within a box. Okay, nice. You'll see that very sort of Apple-ish in its packaging. Everybody's taking cues from Apple. Very sturdy inner box. That's nice. All right. It comes with this, tra fits neatly in this travel bag, which is really cool. It can, that'll fit in my carry-on easily. Um, with a strap that you can put it over your shoulder if you're walking with it. You don't want to carry it in a backpack or whatever. Um, got some instructions here. Otherwise, just an empty box. So let's dive into this. Oh, 
All right. Interesting pouch. Um, let's see what it's got in here. Uh, no inner zippers that I can tell, but a good carrying pouch. Very sturdy, feels sturdy. All right, the tripod itself, carbon fiber, and the legs fold up very tightly into this form factor that makes it very small uh, from a circumference standpoint. And um, yeah, very nice. Let me see what the weight is here, 1,350 grams. That's lighter than anything I've used, and I'll throw up on the screen here how that compares with the Peak design. Now, right off the bat, I can tell you this feels substantial. It feels well-made, solid piece of kit here, um, and the feet have built-in spikes. You can unscrew the feet, turn them around, and they have built-in spikes. The legs fit neatly tucked in to what is really a center column, but we're going to talk about that center column here for a minute. This center column is made up of three columns, which adds stability, and they are form shaped in sort of a triangle, which makes it all fit together. It's got uh, your normal ratchet system here at the top of the leg, so if you need to extend it, Am I going to be able to do this? Extend it further than its normal reach. I think. All right, going to figure out how to do that. Like I said, I'm just now unboxing it, but I know it can extend out, get very low to the ground, especially when you raise this center column. It's got a very substantial ball head with one lever. I like that. The ball head feels tight and secure in there. And when you pull that lever up, man, it's not, that ball's not moving. Um, it's got a panning. Oh, that's unscrewing right now, but let me unscrew this. So I'm unscrewing this. And now it can pan left and right for those uh, uh, panoramic photos that you want to take. It also has a slot in the ball head so that if you don't have an L bracket or something like that, you can angle it completely sideways and get your portrait orientation shots done. Very nice. The ball head itself comes with a Arca Swiss connection up here, Arca Swiss compatible connection. And looks like they give you a, a camera plate up here that fits with this. Oh yeah, and that pops right out. Now I got my camera here and I'm gonna see how my existing three-legged thing bracket, which is Arca Swiss uh, format, uh, will fit in here. So let's see how this works. Well, it fits that way, but these bars on my three-legged thing are interfering with what is some um, screws up here, and I might be able to take those screws out the screws stick up and are preventing it from sitting down. I believe the screws sort of keep this bracket that came with it in place, left or right. Okay, we have a bubble level there in the, uh, the, the ball head, that's nice. All right, and there's this uh, screw ring down here that keeps that center column in place and when you loosen this ring when you loosen this ring the ball head I mean sorry the center column can extend and just right off the bat and we haven't taken it outside yet but that feels very sturdy what I also wanted to point out to you guys is you get two tripods in one you got the main tripod here but you can take this center out Well, what is the center column out? And you effectively now have a second smaller tripod. That is very cool. Little rubber feet too, so got some stability. Inside the ball head itself, there is an attachment to, for your phone. 
So if you want to put a phone in there, it's hidden neatly inside the ball head itself. That's pretty cool. All right. So the tripod legs are the clip, not the twist. They're the clip kind. Okay, and that has sort of a spring load to it. So you got to make sure it's firmly down or it'll spring. Yeah, it's going to spring back open. There, you got to hear it click in order to be shut. Seems pretty simple to open. Very fluid. And all of them shut pretty well. You got to pay attention to that last one, that little one. All right. Oh, and it's got a, a lanyard here in the middle. If you want to attach some weight when it's extended, uh, rather than a hook, it's got a lanyard um, so that you can add some weight for stability. All right, let's get this back together, take it outside and talk a little more about it. You know, also with this ball head, it comes unscrewed. So if you have a favorite ball head, you can attach your own ball head to this. It doesn't have to be uh, the heapy ball head, um, but I will be using this because it seems very sturdy and very capable. Um, but just know that does come off and you can attach whichever ball head you want to attach with it. Hey guys, one limiting factor on this hippy, hippy uh, tripod is um, that Arca Swiss connection is pretty limiting. There were a couple of screws in the top that was blocking my three-legged thing bracket from, uh, from connecting solidly on here. You can remove the screws because the screws were just designed for the uh, Heipi, um plate to fit in there and not slide back and forth. The screws keep it from sliding back and forth. Um, but even when I take the screws out, this has a hard time fitting in there flush. I mean, it will connect, but this thing, this lever won't slide all the way over and lock, which this thing's tight right now, but I'm not sure I trust it. You know, we're talking about a very expensive camera. Um, what it's supposed to do, this locking mechanism, once the Arca Swiss falls in there, it just clamps down and slides over and locks uh, further this way. Um, but it's not, and you can tell when you look at the side that this plate, which normally falls down flush level, is tilted up a little bit still, which to me says it's not seating correctly. This three-legged thing bracket is a little too tall or a little too thick for the clamp. Um, so I've got to figure out another way to do it. I think I'm going to go ahead and keep the bracket that came with the tripod on the camera because you can always tilt it to a portrait orientation using the ball head, not a big deal. But that also meant that I had to remove my hand strap because my one end of my hand strap was connected to the three-legged thing and that's no longer on there. So just having to make some concessions. So just be aware that if you're buying this tripod, uh, unless you're using a different ball head for it, this ball head is very limiting and really only effectively allows you to use the uh, camera plate, the locking plate that came with the tripod. I will say though, with the plate that came with the tripod installed and this thing firmly attached and anchored down, this thing is not moving. It's pretty solid. Uh, so I'm losing my hand strap effectively is really all that I'm lost here. So I'll maybe try to go find another solution for a hand strap. I could put the neck strap back on it, but I don't like neck, neck straps. They catch the wind and cause camera shake. All right, I've got the two fully extended here, just to give you a little bit of reference. Um, obviously at its base, uh, a full-size tripod like this has at least a foot, if not more, on this. 
and I will put up the measurements of this uh, Heapy um, tripod as it relates to as it compares to the Peak Design. Uh, for those of you familiar with Peak Design, but clearly these are made for two different things. I will tell you this is very sturdy; feels very sturdy. I've got no issues. I wouldn't have any issues taking this out just about anywhere, to be honest with you. Okay, I did figure out, you know, how to release these uh, legs. You pull them in a little bit. You can push it down till you, you push the, this button down till you hear it click. And then the legs will rise freely to just about that angle. So you can get pretty low to the ground without even first um, inverting the, uh, the ball head. And then remember, you also have that secondary tripod that comes out that I get you very low to the ground if you had to. Looks like these clip is clip out as well. Yep. These have buttons on the legs too where you can extend them further. Yeah, you're getting Now you're getting, you know, what is that? You're going to be four or five inches off the ground if you, if you have to be. That's pretty cool. And the tripod itself has another bubble level in here, not just the, the ball head, but the tripod itself. Slide that back in there and crank it down. Oh, wait a minute. Let's lift it up. I want to see how sturdy it is when this thing is extended. Pull it up. Crank this thing down until it's tight. Yeah, that's not, that is very sturdy. That's not going anywhere. And, you know, you can't compare it to this one. Obviously, this is a full size, full size tripod. If you were to raise the uh, raise this center column up, you get a lot more reach out of this one. Yep. Again, now your camera's sitting about a foot different. Um, but for what I need for this camera, uh, for this tripod, this is going to do great. This is going to allow me to walk around, carry something relatively light, and get tripod shots where I probably wouldn't have taken this other one uh, just because of the sheer size and difficulty in transporting. Love this Manfrotto. It has its it has its uh, purposes, but I think I'm going to be using this quite a bit more. This is very sturdy. And guys, I will put in the description below all of the specs on this tripod, and I also put a link to where you can go find it um, in case you're curious about getting one for yourself. Um, but I want to thank you for joining me today on this quick uh, sort of product reveal on these two things, the Case Magnetic Wolverine filters and this Hype Hippy, Hypey uh, Travel Tripod. Uh, both are going to serve me well. Um, like and subscribe. Thank you guys for joining me. I'll see you again soon.